Hello and welcome everybody to Women in Business Wednesdays. I have the special pleasure of interviewing today, Miss Kayla Allen. Welcome, Kayla. Thank you. Thank How you. are you? I'm great. It's a holiday. I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah, we're pre-recorded, so it is a holiday. But thank you for taking time out of your holiday to um, to talk to me. Um, now, Kayla, tell us a little bit. We do this every Wednesday, um, Women in Business Wednesdays. Um, we air about one o'clock when we're on YouTube, FFL, um, FFL Fury YouTube page. Um, Kella, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, again, my name is Kayla. Um, I'm 26. My birthday was actually a few weeks ago. And um, I've been with FFL coming on a week, a year. Okay. Um, prior to that, I was doing property management for about four years, uh, two promotions and two relocations in the game. And um yeah, so I, and I made my transition about last year. With FFL. Okay, so you relocated twice. Yes, with okay. my prior. Uh, so industry. where were you? Are you? You're not from the Maryland area? No, I am. Um, okay, it's just uh, within the promo. Like I, I used to work in the Oxon Hill area, and then um, I got a promotion, and got relocated in like the Highsville area. Yeah. Okay, got you. Okay, so now, so you, if you had two promotions in the year, the most, I mean, four years, right? Right. Mm -hmm. The most people, they're like, oh, my gosh, I'm moving up in my company. But you why are you here? <laughs> um, That's a good question. <laughs> because uh, that sounds fancy. But yeah. uh, <laughs> with me, you know, obviously creating some type of uh, history with that industry and working hard, because if I wasn't working hard, I wasn't going to get those promotions. However, I want to say out of four years working there, um collectively i maybe made a five dollars worth of a raise collectively okay. in a four-year span so meaning that i'm taking on a heavier workload but i'm not really getting compensated the way i should be mm -hmm. um so you know a, a, a mutual friend you know put the bug in my ear about uh ffl but I, i'm not gonna lie i did put it in my back pocket mm -hmm. um, so i was like i was comfortable uh where i was even though i understood i was getting underpaid and then, you know, it was just a point of time, especially when COVID hit, um, you know, things started to come to light as far as, you know, the way that corporate America was treating us. And um, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I work too hard. Uh, I know I add too much value to be, uh, you know, get compensated or even acknowledged the way that I should be. So, you know, once I learned about FFL, learned about the independent schedule you're able to create understand that this is a recession and COVID, you know, recession free um, industry, meaning mm -hmm. that it doesn't really get affected. Um, and then the compensation alone, you know, it, it just made sense for me to kind of transition over here. So. Okay. And then th did you, you didn't transition right away. Like you started part time, right? Yeah. I started part time. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. So what made you go from, cause I know that's, that's scary for most people, right? Right. Um, to transition from like a, a job where they feel is secure right? right? Yeah. to now you're working on commission only. Right. So right. how did you, how did you make yourself be okay with that transition from part-time to full-time? Um, so, I mean, I, I'm not a skeptical person. I'm, mm. I'm always open to new opportunities, but I am going to, uh, you know, move with my brakes <laughs> walking into it. Um, I like to fill it out. So um, I started off part time. So, um, you know, it, it, I wanted to get adopted to the industry in general because uh, I'm not going to lie. I was skeptical of going fully commissioned. Now, working in property management, I was partially commissioned. It, it was a similar industry. It was essentially sales, not hard sales, but sales converting mm -hmm. prospects over to, you know, uh, to essentially clients or residents. So I understood that basic fundamental concept. Um, so when I started with FFL, I, you know, applied that there. Um, and then within my first 30 days, I actually made like three, four times my monthly salary that I was making at my full time. So the system is moving itself part time. Okay. Part time here at FFL. I've made three to four times amount of my income that I would have made in 30 days at my four time job. So wow. from there, it just made sense. It made sense. <laughs> right. Why am I here? <laughs> like, and then considering that that was me working on 
part time. So obviously I didn't have as much time available. So it just made sense to me. OK, if this is what I'm able to do with dedicating just a little bit of my time to this industry. Can you imagine if I shift and make this my full priority? Mm. You know, I, I can only under, I can only imagine what I can maximize out of it. So, yeah, it just made sense. Okay. See, so, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense to me. <laughs> um, now, let me ask you this. Why do you think in your, um, because you, you said you're 26 years old, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, like, I guess, I, and I think for most people, not just people who are your age or any age, like to make that kind of transition is different than most people have been, you know, most people have been brought brought up, go to school, get good grades, get a good job, right? Mm -hmm. And it, were you brought up the same way? Like, was yeah. that, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I because I just like to understand, like, in your mind, like, you just said it just makes, I'm just, I, I don't, I'm trying to like kind of break it down, mm -hmm. like, because it's, it has something to do with how you think and how you've been thinking even in 26 years, right? Yeah. yeah. So what, I mean, are you somebody who reads books? Like, how do you have this mindset that already developed into something different than, like I said, most people have, that have, right? So, cause I started insurance, I was 36 years old when I started, right? And even then I was kind of like, eh, this is what I really, you know, go to school, get good grades, get a good job. But it made sense because I start. I was making, I knew if I got a degree, I wouldn't, that still wasn't going to give me a raise at my job it, it, to right. the amount of money that I was making part-time selling insurance. Right. And it wasn't for FFL because that, that's all another story. But why, what do you think is in your mindset that sets you apart from most people, Kayla? Um, one of them is that I am coachable. Um, okay. People don't understand that you have to be coachable to the idea of, oh, to the process of learning something new. A lot of people, you know, don't like to be coachable or they, you know, essentially like it's, we're trained <laughs> to think that somebody else is always supposed to tell me what I'm worth. That's what we're mm. trained, right? Say it and, again, girl. That's good. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, most times when there is some type of opportunity or something that seems too good to be true, we automatically associate it with like, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, before even applying yourself to it. So I've always been a person that's been strong enough to kind of give something the benefit of the doubt. Um, and I've always had a strong work ethic. And I, one major part of me that I think sets apart for most people is I'm not scared to learn. I love learning. Okay. Like knowledge is a powerful thing. That your mindset is the most powerful thing. Feeding yourself, reading by you know by reading books and you know by exercising and by you know giving yourself self care or you know by even you know surrounding yourself by people that like I like being in a room full of people that maybe no more than me or they're in a, a higher position than me. Like, I love that. Like, I don't get, you know, discouraged by it. I go, mm -hmm. it, it actually amplifies me. Like, yeah. okay, what can I take away from this person that I can apply to my life rather as personal or business? So that's just always something I've always been. Like, that's always been in my nature. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, I, I guess it's it, it, it has benefited me in <laughs> many ways since, but yeah, I, I really take serious having a strong mindset because people don't understand your your mind is the most powerful thing. Somebody can strip everything away from you. And as long as you have that mindset and you're creative, you always will figure out a way. Yeah, so, absolutely. I love yeah. that. I love that. Um, so now what's different like for your family? You don't have any children, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So what's 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 different in your lifestyle? now than when you started when you had a your your corporate job yeah that's a good so, <laughs> for starters uh you know uh not to speak superficially but i have my house okay, no, <laughs> i was able to get my house <laughs> yeah, 20, really so you important. bought a house yes i bought a house <laughs> okay that's a big deal yeah you know, so i was able to you know buy my house and you know be able to create a level of independence for myself and live comfortably um, I've been able to kind of do more for my mom and my siblings and, and not even just on a monetary, um, perspective of it, but just time, 
Like I have time now. Like, uh, you know, it was one point when um, just even a few weeks ago, my mom, uh, she just had surgery. So, you know, my siblings, they still have to go to cheer practice. They still have to go to school. They still yeah. have to do this. And um, even when she has to go back and forth to her doctor's appointments, uh, all the way in Gaithersburg, Maryland, I was able to afford the time to actually like, you know, kind of supplement that for her. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, I'm able to kind of be there physically and step up because right now you can't. Now, when I was in corporate America, I couldn't do that. <laughs> so you got to put a time off request. Yeah, you got to put PTO. Off. You got to yeah. do this. You got to do that. And it's just like, oh, my God. And then even when you did have, like, PTO and things like that accessible to you, you you still were skeptical of doing it because, you know, and you taking, you taking a cut out of your pay for, for that time period. But here it's like, no, that's not the case. Um, you know, you can easily convert over from, you know, if if you need to be uh in other places you can convert over to, to doing sales virtually and then you know on top of that here like even if you have to take like a small break for like emergency purposes such as that you have the income is so maximized there that you know you you you're making like three four months worth of what somebody will make in a 30 day period at a nine to five, you know what I'm saying? So you still even have a security blanket that's sitting on you, even when you're kind of at that moments when you have to step away for a few seconds. That's um, good. So yeah, I, I, I love that you have the, that flexibility here, but yet still able to create a foundation and stuff like that. So, so let real quick, let's talk about that. Cause a lot of people would, okay. Think, okay. When you work for yourself, you can do what you want to do. Right. No. <laughs> People don't understand you. A lot of people think that you work less when you are self-employed. And a lot of people don't understand you become HR. Mm -hmm. You become the manager. You become the employee. You become the accountant. You become everything. everything. So, <laughs> so like, it's, it's an adjustment. Like, people don't understand so much that goes into just showing up and getting paid. Um, that's what we have been trained on naturally in corporate America in general. So when you have to kind of supplement in different areas, it's like a lot of people don't have that discipline to do that. I'm going to be honest. I have, I was always strongly confident in my work ethic. It showed and it reflected on the success I had in my other industry. But you really, I really learned when I got here, I don't have the work ethic that I thought I had. Oh, that's <laughs> good. That's good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, it's a lot more discipline. It's very rewarding because uh, you do – we get we get compensated on as high as we do here for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you get rewarded for it. You know, it, it has its perks and stuff like that. Uh, but just know that everything falls on you. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. I always, the, you know what I always say, Kayla, too much is given, much is required, right? And so mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're not, we're not given, we got to work for more, right? And because we work for more, we're paid like very, very lucratively, yeah. but yeah. it's, it's, it's not just, we don't just get it. Like we got to go to work for it. And you do have to be very disciplined, mm -hmm. you know, and that is the thing that most people have to learn is because we're taught <clears throat> from a very young age, think about it in kindergarten what time to be to school, how long we're in school. We're taught, we need to be here. Even when you go to high school, your, your schedule, you need to be in this class at this time, right? So we're every, we're, for, for our whole growing up, someone's telling us everything that we need to what do. To do. Yeah. And then and when we, when people get to college, they're not told what to do, which is crazy because like we just, we go from this, this world of every step of the, our way is being told what to do. And then as soon as we're out of high school, we got to figure awesome. it out. <laughs> it stops <laughs> but and then with college it's, it's, it's essentially like you know that you go through that transition and you're it's a lot riding on it you you actually have to make it through and get that degree and that's still not even promising you won't be where you need to be and sometimes people accumulate debt all types of stuff so it's like in my opinion if somebody is strong enough to go through the process of going through college 
even down to trusting the process. Because people don't understand when you go to college, you're trusting that process. You're trusting that you're going to show up, you're going to get the grades, you're going to do your part, you're going to get the degree, and you're going to get this XYZ job with this XYZ rate. Mm. It's not guaranteed. So yeah. if you're able to have that level of characteristics and mindset with college, like you can very, very easily transition that to uh, entrepreneurship, in my opinion. You know, a lot of people don't don't kind of compare the two as the same. People don't understand. It's really the same mindset. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's understand. real. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same mindset, essentially. But people think it's something so totally different. No, when you go to college, you're trusting that that process is going to work out. It's the same difference. It is. And then you come here and then you got to follow a process or a procedure that's already in place. Right. And trust that process, right? That this is going right. to work and this is going to bring you income, right? So, no, that's good. I, girl, I <laughs> I love the way that you think, Kayla, so much. Like, this is it's amazing to me. Um, so I'm so proud of you because, like I said, you're like, I wish at 25, 26 years old, I was thinking the way that you were thinking. I'm sure my life would be, much, I mean, it's, my life is great, but it would financially, I would be in a completely different place if I was thinking the way that you were. 20 because I'm literally 20 years older than you, right? So, yeah. thank you. Good. <laughs> thank you <girl. laughs> but I, you know, I just I didn't think the way that you thought at your age, you know what I'm saying? So, that's a that's amazing to me. Um, now you are you are um recruiting, you're building a team, a building organization, right? Yeah. So, if people wanted to get in touch with you, we got your Instagram at the bottom. Um, but how would how what other ways could they get in touch with you? Um, yep. So Instagram, Kayla Brene, as she said, listed at the bottom. Um, you can also directly reach out to me uh, by contacting me on my number, uh, 202-503-0560. You know, just simply, you can either call or shoot a text. Uh, it's better to text so I know who you are. <laughs> um, just let me know, you know, your name and just say, hey, you know, I just, I wanted to learn a little bit more about Family First Life and what it has to offer. And, you know, I just put you in front of the information and you allow it, allow yourself to make that decision if it if it's something that makes sense for you or not but i can't imagine it not though <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> i can't imagine it not <laughs> so kayla thank you for your time again thank you for taking time out of your schedule to on a holiday um to sit here and talk to me for a couple minutes and so hopefully i learned so much about you so um mm -hmm. i'm appreciative of that um but if you guys are looking to uh, work with a powerhouse superstar with obviously a lot of energy because she's 26 years old um, <laughs> and a great work ethic. Reach out to Kayla. She can definitely help you get started and get going in FFL. Thank you again, Kayla. Thank I you. Look, I look forward to learning more about you. Thank you. Me too. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, girl. I can't, and I can't wait to see how, every, like, how your success builds and builds here at Family First Life because I know you're just getting started. Yep. Thank exactly. you. Have a great one. You too. Bye.